Hey friends, Don Allen here. Hey, before we get into tonight's episode, I want to make you aware of something that I, I think is really amazing. I'm going to invite you to join us every Tuesday night for Tuesday Night Live. Every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, we go live uh, right here at the Midwest Healing Center. You can come and join us in person, 728 North Main Street in Lorry, Missouri, right here at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. If you can't make it in person, probably a bunch of you couldn't. That's okay. You can go over to the Two Guys in the Bible Facebook page, TWO, Guys in the Bible Facebook page. We go live over there 6 30 p.m. every single Tuesday night. What are we doing over there? Oh man, we're preaching all kinds of amazing messages, faith, Holy Spirit, healing, miracles, all those things. Join us every Tuesday 6 30 p.m. Central Time. We hope to see you there. Hey, welcome to the program. Now, we have started a series titled Positioned to Receive Healing. That's what we're looking back. We want to go back into the Bible here and see how to position ourselves to be able to receive that finished work of Jesus Christ, specifically in the area of healing and miracles. Now, there is a finished work spoken of in Isaiah, spoken of in 1 Peter. Let's go look at Isaiah first because he prophesied about something that was to come, something that would take place that would provide a way for mankind to be healed after Jesus left. We know that he worked miracles while he was here on the earth. We know that. All kinds of people that believe that, that yes, while he was here, he's working miracles, he's healing people, but that's all gone now. That's what people say. But Isaiah saw something here in a work that was coming in Jesus that would supply healing even after the ascension. In Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and he carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten and afflicted by God as with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. With the stripes that wounded him. Now, did that event take place? Yes, it did. We know that Jesus was taken. He was taken to that whipping post before he hung on that cross. Why? Because he was going to fulfill this prophecy right here. And so he did. And then this says that when that event takes place, that it will provide a way for mankind to receive peace and a way to get physical healing. 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on that tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Now we've got Peter. He's looking back. He's seeing the prophecy was fulfilled. Jesus took that cross. He bore our sins in the, on that, that tree. Nobody arguing that. But what else? Then he says, by those stripes you were healed, meaning that healing is now available for any and all. It is the finished work of Jesus Christ. As he said, it is finished. And so now what we have to do is we've got to begin to position ourselves to be able to receive that finished work of Jesus. How do we do that? Well, I told you last time we were together, it was going to be that we were going to need to have a firm foundation underneath us to stand upon. And by a firm foundation, again, I'm talking about a foundation of Scripture. And just for illustration purposes, uh, for our foundation, I'm not talking just one, right? No, no, no. We, we want something where we can have a really wide foundation to be able to stand upon that and be able to believe God for healing. And so can you have too many scriptures? I don't think so. We need scriptures to stand upon to do this. And so we said, you know what? We were going to keep this simple. We were just going to look over at Mark 11 and verse 24. And it says this, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Three things, desire, pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have it. Come on, that's the healing. That's the miracle. You shall have it. That's the manifestation of the physical healing. And so we said, well, let's break it down. Desire, well, we all desire to be healed. Nobody's desiring to be sick and stay in, in, in sickness and pain and diseases. So pretty easy. We've got one third of the scripture already done. And then it says, pray. Well, we know how to pray, right? It's simple. It's just simply you talking to God the way that you talk to him. But remember now what I said about that prayer, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desired of him. So when we pray, we can have a confidence in that while we're praying to God, if we ask anything according to his will, that's the key Praying prayers, asking God for something that is God's will. Well, how do we find the will of God? The Bible. 
The Bible is God's will. And so how do we do this uh, in this case? How do we find out if it's God's will for you and I to be healed? Because if it is, then this says that we can pray according to his will, that he would hear us and that he would answer us. So praying is easy. Again, it's just talking to God. But we've got to ask something that we find that is God's will. We have to know that beforehand before you pray. So here's an easy example. You cannot ask God for somebody else's spouse, right? You, you can't ask God for that because you would have no confidence because you know what the word of God says about that. You can't ask God to kill somebody that you don't like with any confidence. Why? Because you know that is not the will of God because you know what the Bible says about that. But how about this? Can we, can we ask God to heal our bodies? Well, we can because we're going to find that in the word. And uh, here's the thing. We're going to go look at it tonight. Is it the will of God for you to be well? Now, real quick, if you're not sure what it is that the Bible says about that, about healing, I have a 101 healing scripture CD for you tonight. It's, it's about 25 minutes long, 101 scriptures right out of the Bible, set to some music, absolutely free. You can see the information on the screen. Go ahead and order that CD tonight. Get a hold of that 101 healing scriptures for free right there for you tonight. So look, here's the simple truth uh, why some struggle to receive healing. There's three things in no order, ignorance, unbelief, and sin. Now listen, I believe from what I've seen over about the past 20 years here that the number one issue is ignorance because if we can defeat ignorance, then right away unbelief is handled and then sin isn't a problem any longer when you know. People do not know enough about the subject of healing to be able to get into a position to be able to receive it. Isaiah 5 and verse 13 says, God's people have gone into captivity because of no knowledge. Now we can see that, right? With sickness and diseases, physical issues, there are people that are being held captive. Good people, God-loving people, but because they don't know, they're being held captive by these issues. Hosea 4, 6 even takes it a little further than that. It says, my people are destroyed because of no knowledge. Again, we can see that with sickness and diseases, and that's even true in the natural. So let me give you another one. Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. So what he's saying is this, though, you and I cannot continue to walk as the world walks and specifically in the area of talking about relying on just natural means to cure these sicknesses and diseases and physical issues. At worst, people are dying. Dying, at best, people are still being held captive by these issues and not doing what it is that God is calling them to do in the fullness. It says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of what? The ignorance that is within them. Not because they're a bad person. It's a lack of knowledge. Alienated just simply means separated from the life of God. A non-participant in the life of God. Come on, we got to learn some things tonight. We really need to put our faith out there because it appears to me ignorance can kill you quicker than any sickness and disease ever could. Come on, let's learn some things tonight. Mark 11 and verse 24, so we said desire, we said pray according to God's will, and, and what else? Because isn't it true? So many are saying this, man, come on, we, we wanted it so bad, and we prayed, and we called in, and man, they really wanted it, and we called, and, the, and it didn't happen. Friends, you're only doing two-thirds of a three-part scripture. Desire, yes. Pray, yes. But did they ever get into the area of believe that you receive when you prayed. That's got to come from the knowledge of the word of God that builds faith in the one seeking healing. Because the Bible says if you can do that, then you shall have it. That's the part of the foundation. If we're being honest, we got to recognize that that's a bit of a weakness there because healing will find you in this. It'll find you in, in, in believing that you have received when you prayed what you desired. So this is what I felt to, uh, led to do for some time now. Let's get that part built up. Let's go back. We don't need to build up the desire part. We got that. We don't need to build up the prayer part, but we need to shore up the foundation underneath believe that I receive. This is Jesus speaking, and he's asking us before you ever felt it, experienced it, you got to believe that what I just asked, it is finished, it is done. That's called faith, friends. So how could we? What could convince us to believe that I receive? Well, let's take this scripture in Mark and let's just quickly replace healing with salvation. Desire. I desire to be born again. I want to be saved. And so what are we going to do? We're going to pray based off of what I know. I asked God because I, I heard, I know these scriptures. 
And it is the will of God that all would come to the saving knowledge of, of his dear son, that none would perish. And so I wanted it, and I asked, and I believed that I received my salvation. I'm born again. We were able to believe that we received because we heard enough information about that topic. We heard about how much God loves, and we placed that under, I believe that I received. Uh, we heard about him sending Jesus, and if anybody would believe, they would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we placed that under why? I can believe that I receive. If you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead, and we did that and we placed that under and shored up why I can believe that I received salvation and now I'm born again. Now when others come along and they have that same desire, they want to be saved, then they can pray. We begin to tell them the scriptures. They tell them these things and they're able to believe that they receive. That's exactly what we've got to do with healing. We're going to have to go find scripture after scripture begin to shore up the weak parts of the foundation so that we have something to believe in and that something must be the word of God. You cannot build on doctrines, theological arguments, man's personal experiences. Those will not hold up when you find yourself sick and diseased and in pain. Let's have something to stand upon. God, I want it. I want to be healed. I prayed. I'm asking the Father God to heal me out of the finished work of Jesus Christ. He's already done it. He fulfilled the prophecy. And now I'm asking that I would be healed too. And, and I believe it. I, I believe it because now let's go fill in the because. Come on, that's the part. Let's go fill in the because. Let's get our scriptures on it. Because as I said, the scripture reveals the word of God on all topics, including healing and miracles for today. What's the first thing we need to know? The very first thing that we need to know is this. Is it God's will that I would be healed? Is it the will of God to heal? This is a big one. So we got our belief that I receive. Now, how do we find out? We've got to have the will of God to shore that up. We got to know. How are, we gonna, how are we gonna know it? So here's the thing, what we gotta recognize is that if we see Jesus doing something that he did or if he said something, that is a direct revelation of the will of God through Jesus for all mankind for all of eternity. John 12 and verse 49, for I have not spoken of myself but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. John 5 and verse 19, and then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, for what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. John 14 and verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. What was he saying? He's just simply saying that Jesus never ever did or said anything on his own accord or because of pressure or because of his own will. Everything you see, everything you hear coming from Jesus was a direct revelation of God through Jesus for all mankind, and that includes healing all. And listen, now I know some of you are going to go Old Testament on me. Well, first of all, friends, you're not an Old Testament saint. There's one thing. Jesus came because he fulfilled the prophecies. He spoke of a new covenant. And so now what? We don't have to sacrifice animals. Isn't that right? Uh, we don't have to go through the rituals of cleansing to be able to find healing now. No, it all comes through faith in Jesus who's provided a finished work. And now we see Jesus healing everybody. Anybody and everybody who wanted it in the New Testament left with the healing. There were no unlucky ones. We do not see any I won'ts in the Bible when it comes to healing. Now listen, we're not going to do away with the Old Testament, not at all. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. We're going to look there too because you know what? The Old Testament, well, it's also filled with healing as well. But let's build this up. Let's get that pillar of God's will. Is it God's will to heal. Let's look at that tonight. Let's look at Jesus' ministry here. If you've seen him, you've seen the Father. So we can see, I, I believe that I receive. We've got the will of God. Now what do we put under that pillar? Let's put Matthew 8, 2 and 3 under there. Verse 2, And behold, a leper came to him, and prostrating himself, worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to cleanse me by curing me. This man had a question. This is the question that millions of people are still struggling with today. God, I know you can. I'm not saying you don't have the power to do it, but will you do it for me? I mean, this man's question right here, I, I, I know you can heal me of this terminal, terrible disease. I know you can if it be 
thy will to do so. How did Jesus answer such a question? I know you can. I just don't know if you want to. How did Jesus answer the question? Verse 3, and he reached out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed by being cured. And instantly his leprosy was cured, and it was cleansed. I am willing. One translation says, of course I will. Telling me that, here's the other thing, then where are we finding the I won'ts? In the Bible, when it comes to anybody that ever came to Jesus for a healing miracle, who's that one unlucky person in the Bible that he said, I won't? Come on, give me scripture. I, I, I won't because you don't have enough faith. Where's that at in the Bible? I won't because it's all in the good Lord's timing. Chapter and verse, please. I won't because my father is working something out in you to teach, to test, to punish. Where is it in your Bibles, friends? It's found in doctrine. It's found in theological argument. It's found in man's personal experience. But you will not find that in the Bible. And if you don't see it in the Bible, then it's what? It's called unbiblical. To say it's not God's will to heal is unbiblical. Let's keep going. How can you believe that you receive? John 3, 14 and 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, what took place in the wilderness? Because he's mentioning a specific story here from the Old Testament about the serpent on a pole and, and, and how it was that people looked at that and they weren't going to perish. Now, listen, I understand that we're thinking that this is speaking of salvation at the cross. Absolutely true. But you, you do need to understand something. Salvation includes healing. Because if you go look on the back side of the cross, what are you going to see? You're going to see Jesus' back where the stripes were taken for your healing. And the same blood that came out of his back is the same one that pierced his hands and his head and his feet. And all that blood pooled at the bottom. Now you try to separate the healing blood from the salvation blood for me. You can't do it. This is what I'm talking about. Numbers 21, 4 through. Nine. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged along the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no food. There's no water. And our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and it bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and they said, We've sinned, we've spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray the Lord that he would take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent, set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent, he put it on a pole, and so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Now listen, this is a type and shadow of Jesus as mentioned in John. Here they are, they've sinned, they've opened themselves up. Who was keeping the serpents from biting them to begin with? God didn't cause it, it's just that when they moved out of that position, the serpents were able to get to them. So here's the fiery serpents, they're biting the people, it's killing them. Moses is instructed to build the serpent on a pole. Everybody that looks upon that, having to turn away from that physical attack by faith and look at the pole, well, here's our New Testament counterpart, the real Jesus, looking unto Jesus. They're all healed, all saved from dying. So even then, God was providing, even in the old covenant, a way for people to be healed. Is that still God's will today? Yes, it is. You can believe that you received because of this. God was always making a way, even when the people had sinned against him and opened themselves up for it. God made a way for them and you and I to be set free from sickness and disease. Now, how about the children of Israel? 400 years of slavery. Now you got to remember they've been abused. They're not fed right. They're working for Pharaoh here. He's mad. He upped their workload because Moses was making him mad. You got a bunch of people that are wounded. No good medical care. Broken bones that didn't heal right. Uh, they weren't taking care of these slaves. You know, lack of nutrients, poor living condition, overworked and underfed. And, through, and, and says through Moses though, hey, you're coming out. You're coming out. Exodus 12, 5 through 13. This is what they were to do. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or the goats. Now you shall keep it under the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood, and they'll put it on the doorpost and on the lintel of the house where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boil it at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head 
its head, it says, with the legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning. And what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with your belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike in the land of Egypt. A lamb without blemish, taken from the sheep of the... Does this sound like somebody else that we recognize here? How about Jesus? He was the spotless lamb without blemish. Kill it at twilight. Is that something that sounds familiar here? And then when the destroyer comes and he sees the blood, come on somebody, when he sees the blood, I will not allow the destroyer to destroy you. Now watch again. Is it God's will to heal? Remember, and they're coming out, get your shoes on, get your bags packed. But what about the old people? What about the sick people? What about the wounded people that, and, and their bodies and the weak people? 400 years of slavery, of overworked and underfed. Psalm 105, 37 gives us a report of what took place that night. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribe. None feeble, no sick in a group of over 1 million people. You can't find me a church with 50 people that you don't have somebody sick or feeble in it. And he said, none of them. And he made a way through the breaking and eating of that body that was broken for them in that Passover lamb to be healed. What about our Passover lamb? What about Jesus whose body was broken for you? For the sole purpose of what? For your physical healing, friends. Come on, it is the will of God. How can you believe that you receive? How can you know that it is the will of God to heal? Well, he healed those that sinned against him in the wilderness by providing a serpent on the pole while we have the real Jesus lifted up. Uh, he had a leper here who's asking a question. He answered the question. Don't know if it's your will uh, to do so. He said, I will. And he healed that man. No questions asked. How about the Passover lamb? What else? How, how about how God has provided you and I some benefits? See, benefits just happen. Right? They just happen here. Watch this now. A benefits package for joining the team, if you will. Watch this one. Psalm 103, 2 through 6. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. If he's doing any of those things, he's doing all of those things. D does he forgive our sins? Does he redeem our lives from destruction? Does he crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies? Is he executing righteousness and justice for the oppressed? If he's doing any of those things, he's doing all those things, which included healing all thine diseases. Why? Because it is his will to do so. It's always been his will to do so a benefits package for simply being one of his. How do I know that it is the will of God to heal? Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now here we have Jesus. It's not just him now. Now he's saying, hey, my father's will is that I authorize you 12 to go out there and heal the sick. The 12 disciples. Well, Donnie, that's the 12. I mean, they traveled with him. They were special. Well, fine. Luke 10, 1 through 9. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves, carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house, whatever city you enter, and they receive you. Eat such things that are set before you, and heal the sick therein, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. Here's the 70. We don't even get to know their names. 70 of them, and they went to these places where Jesus hadn't even been. These were forerunners going in, and he said, Do what? He said, Go into these places and heal the sick and tell them that the kingdom has just come nigh you. What's he saying? He's saying, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. He's saying that same kingdom, God's will is the same there as it is here. He doesn't want any, tell them the kingdom has come nigh you. And it's God's will that in that kingdom and this kingdom that you would be free from sickness and disease. Go tell the people. Come on. What was he saying? So that's not just saying that they're getting to heaven. That was saying that heaven got into them. Come on. Is that's, what, that's exactly what's happened to you and I right here. We are kingdom carriers. What do I mean? Carrying out the will of the king of that kingdom he doesn't want sickness and disease there he doesn't want it here either so back to the leper we see the same story here recorded three times in the gospels in Matthew Mark and Luke all three recorded the same story and amazingly enough they all came out with the same answer I will desire pray believe that I receive when I pray because I know it is God's will why because he answered that leper and he said I will and then he said this uh, I love this I know God's will to heal because what Jesus instructed the 12 he instructed the 70 to go heal the sick and, and, and any of the people that they ran across I know it is the will of God because I have a divine benefits package right here and God said hey don't forget in that package that I also comes with a health plan I heal all your diseases he healed those in the wilderness he healed those that were released from slavery he he sent Jesus Christ not to just forgive me of my sins, not to just cleanse me of unrighteousness, but to take stripes upon his body. He was the stand in. He was the substitute for sin and guilt and shame. And then he gave his body for my body so that by those stripes I could be healed. Come on, do you see it tonight? Then Jesus comes and tells the rest of the world in the Great Commission, Mark 16, 18, believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on, Jesus healed the blind. The lame, the withered, he healed men and women and children. He healed the good, the bad followers, the possessed alike. He healed every single one of them. How can I believe that I receive when I pray? Because it is the will of God. There were no unlucky ones, none in whom it was not the good Lord's timing. He healed them all. Just like Now listen, I understand this. Just like Matthew 7 says, storms will come, right? Winds and wave and sickness and disease, right? I, I understand those things are going to come. That's what I'm talking about here. So what are we going to do? Trauma, physical issues? Issues. What are we going to do? What are we going to pull upon? Can I reach down when the pain is real, when the doctor's report was not what I wanted, when the lump has gotten larger, when the migraine is still throbbing three days later? And come on now. Can I reach down? Can I grab a hold of something? Man, I, I want it to go. I desire to be healed. I'm going to pray right now and then I'm going to reach way down and I'm going to grab a hold of I believe that I receive. Why? Because it is God's will that I would be healed. Come on, friends, listen, is that you tonight? I want you to call the number on the screen. You're gonna to have to leave me a message tonight. But listen, we gotta get this solidified so that we can believe that I receive. We're not done, we still got some others we're gonna put under there, that's for sure. But I want you to say this tonight, Donnie, I believe that I receive my miracle tonight, my healing tonight of, and you just fill in the blanks and then say, because I know that it is God's will to heal me. Donnie, come on, I believe that I'm receiving my miracle healing from cancer tonight, Donnie, because I believe that it is God's will. Come on, Donnie, I believe the pain is gonna leave because I know that it's God's will. Give us time, we're gonna call you back, we'll listen to that message, we'll pray over it, and then I believe Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, you're gonna be able to believe that you receive them. And just like the scripture said, you're gonna have it in Jesus' name. Hey friends, thanks for watching tonight. Let me take just a moment here. I'm gonna ask you to do something if you would, please. Would you please prayerfully consider partnering with this ministry financially, either a one-time tax deductible gift or, or partnering with this on a monthly basis. Now here's why I'm asking you to do that. We mail out hundreds and hundreds, well, I think probably up to thousands now, of prayer cloths a year, along with the free CD and a lot of other free products. We mail these things all over the world. That being said, we want to continue to be able to do that, and we do it at no charge. What am I saying? I'm just asking you to help us to continue to do that for people who can't do it. You know, we just recently mailed out uh, six prayer cloths that went to India recently. So I'm just going to ask you, would you partner with us? We're reaching the world. Come on, we believe what it is that the Bible says, and we're going to continue to do it, but we're just asking for your help. The information's on the screen. Please do that. Allow us to show this world truly that Christ is their healer.